This is a 144 Sprinter, the little guy. This build is for a professional chef, so we are galley focused. Yeah, the 144 Sprinter. This is the little baby and it's galley cooking focused. We've certainly accomplished that. But beyond that, this is going to be a semi full time living experience, semi full time. So I wanted it to be spacious. I want this to live like it was a 170 extended. I wanted it to live like it was the biggest sprinter when in fact it's the littlest sprinter. This. <gasps> Sorry. This countertop right here over seven feet long, right? Coming this way, if I stop right at the appliance garage, I'm a four and a half feet. It's spacious, it's spacious. We've got a nice full length wall cabinet. I have her twin bed. This is going to be a couch futon that opens up into a twin bed at night. And of course, it houses all of my electrical components. My big mama Luke, my Lithionics 640 amp hour battery is right here with a BMS and a heater. I'll be able to put all my Victron components on the back side of the shower box. So those are out of the way. Now, how can I do that, you say? The shower box is pressed up against the, the driver's wall, the port side. This is a very unique van. This van has two sliding doors, one on each side. This van was built by Mercedes to be used to show at the various auto shows around the world, this country, I don't know. I'm gonna say around the world and Mars. When they got done with it, they put it up for sale. My client bought it, two sliding doors. You know what this means? This is the same situation I have in my minis my mini me's and my midi me's, the Mercedes Metris, two sliders. I put all my physical plant on that port side. Now, full access. I can hang all of my electronic components, my, my Victron components on the outside wall of that shower. I open the slider and there they are right there. Easy to access, nice. The twin bed is gonna come all the way down as a futon during the day and it terminates right here at the galley return. And then we got this nice appliance tower in the corner. This corner is screaming for something of this nature to be designed into it. It's just a dead corner. Now, these are not the actual components that are going in this van. I just put those in for demonstration purposes. You've seen me cook. I don't need anything fancy. I could actually get by with a toaster oven and a microwave. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm putting in a gas cooktop. That's right, I said it, propane. Small bottle of propane in its own protective case in the back. So she's gonna have a flame cooktop. She's gonna have an induction cooker over here. I, I, I don't know if I, I, I wanna keep talking about this. This is a 24 inch deep countertop. This is residential depth countertop. It's the first time in a van I've been able to fit a 24 inch deep countertop. Usually I do 18. What 24 means is that I can put in any style or size sink I want. Now, of course, it's got to stop here and move rearward because right here, from here to the end of the galley is an isotherm DR160 refrigerator freezer. It's a drawer style. Hence the name DR-160, drawer style, fridge, freezer. This aisle's gotta be close to 30 inches wide. Now, I made it this wide for a very specific reason. There's a strong possibility that she's gonna want an oven, a gas oven. Now, I know of some really nice oven cooktop combinations from the sailboat world. Okay, and you know the ones that are on a gimbal so they can maintain level while you're underway? Well, we don't need the gimbal, but you know that type of stove, they're really high end, really good looking. If she wants to put that oven here, that's where I gotta maintain this aisle width so we can accommodate the oven and yet still have a little bit of a, 
a style on each side. If she doesn't want the oven and she can get by with the air fryer and the convection microwave or whatever component she wants to put here, then I can narrow the aisle and make this bench a little wider, which is what I'd like to do. Make it just a little bit wider, encroach on the aisle, all uh, predicated on whether or not she wants that oven. I do want to keep this whole area open here. My client has a nice acoustic guitar that she can hang right up here over the bed. Uh, we haven't done any windows, and in fact, we don't really need windows in this van if she doesn't want them. We can put in a skylight, we'll put in a fan and an air conditioner, we'll have solar on the roof, we'll have radiant heat in the floor, we'll have three zones of heat, we'll have unlimited hot water, full featured, full featured uh, Humble Road van. I don't know how to build them any other way. The shower box serves a multitude of purposes here. First and foremost, the client asked for a strong bulkhead wall behind the driver's seat in case of a collision of any sort. This van actually came with a steel bulkhead in place. We removed that. Uh, so step number one, we needed a bulkhead behind the driver's seat. So what we did is we chose to put our shower box here. The shower box is also going to serve, as I just mentioned, to house all of my Victron components on the outside wall. Now, if you notice, there's an angle cut into the shower box, 45 degree. We took this corner away, very similar to what we did in the Big Beautiful Beast. In this case, that affords us a beautiful walkway into the van. It's very inviting, very important to keep this area wide open. Look at how inviting this is. When you come in the slider, you've got this nice big open area. We're going to have swivel seats. So you spin that around, you could have a nice big area to stretch out and converse. We could do a flip up galley here if you needed more counter space, but I don't know what you'd be doing then. But look how inviting this is. These angles, the relationship between this corner and this missing corner, it just brings you right down the line here. Very nice. So here's what we're going to do. Years ago, I started to develop a system where the armoire was built into the shower. Back then, it was a pretty ambitious uh, brainstorm I had. That was for Sam's van. It was going to be a double armoire that folded out and uh, opened up into the shower bathroom. At that time, the idea wasn't ready for prime time. The reason being, you had to open those two doors in a very cumbersome way in the aisle. It wasn't up here in the open area. I've always wanted to revisit that idea because I think it's a very efficient use of space. This van, it's imperative that we make efficient use of space because it's the little 144. Did I mention that? So this area of the shower is going to have shelves and a small door. It is the armoire. You see that? The armoire box is on the back of that shower door. And what we did is we made sure to, at this size, we couldn't only make it this tall so it would clear the countertop. See that? It just passes over the corner of the countertop. Now, if I shorted it slightly and we can clear this, then I could make it deeper. I could make it a uh, almost full length. But then at this part, we'd have to go over the bed. So it's either going to be this height from the top or I could bring it down so it swings over the bed, which I might do. I like that. And then, of course, like I said, you're going to have a door within the door. That's how you get to your clothing this way. When you're done with your shower and this is open, this will also be open shelves to your clothing. So you can stand out here, step out of the shower into this big open area and get dressed, right? And then this way is your toilet. So as it turns out, this became a really nice size shower. Uh, it's, I think it's 36 by 24. And I've got a Trolino toilet in here. Now this is the small Trolino, okay? Uh, low, this is for the mini me's. This van, I'm gonna get it the full size Trolino, which is a full 17, 18 inches tall, like a normal toilet height. But this is all very easy. 
This is very easy to operate. And I've taken care of all of her clothing storage. And of course, she'll have the obligatory uh, cockpit shelf over the driver and passenger seats. You get a lot of storage up there, a lot. Now, let me show you the garage. The garage, uh, as it turns out, is surprisingly spacious, given the fact that this is a 144 Sprinter. Um, here's that galley area I was talking about. I'm gonna try to get 30 gallons of fresh water in here. I've got my Aqua Hot heating system in there. And I also have to make room for a nice big sink and some drawers. So wait till you see this magic. Uh, but then I, the whole idea is to keep this whole back area open for storage. This is basically the shape of her bicycle when it's folded up. It's an electric bike. And when it's folded up, it's 30 by 21 by 15 deep. So I could put it over here in the corner, but not so much in the corner because you know the way these vans come around this way. I want to put this on a sliding tray so it comes all the way out for her to be able to lift it. So that would mean I'd have to put it there and I lose about eight inches over there. If I bring it to the center of the van, it increases my storage space. My tray is only this big and I could put a two-tiered storage box right there and the bike can come all the way out as far as we want it. I'm also thinking about a way that I can pull this out on a tray and then lower it down. So the tray would slide out and then it needs another pivot, maybe on gas, gas assist. And it goes down to the ground. Gas assist, lift it up, go back in. That would be quite a feat. So we're going to think about that. We got some, we got some uh, heady projects uh, moving into this next build cycle. We've got to do a kayak rack on the top of a ProMaster. Now somehow that kayak rack is going to have to roll the kayak down the side to a point where this guy can take it off, put it on by himself, maybe nose into a clip, tail into a clip. Somehow that thing's then got to roll up on top of a high roof ProMaster and lock into place without him climbing all around to do so. Oh, we're back at the van here. Uh, so that's, that's the, the constraint we have. That's the concern. I really don't want to put the bike over here. I'd like to maintain visual access to these water mechanicals. You know, my water pump, all that jazz will be right in there. So I want to maintain physical access because as you know, a problem arises, you're going to solve that problem before it gets worse if you can see it. I am not a proponent uh, as many, many builders are, of covering up everything. Oh, that looks that's such a pretty garage. Meanwhile, you don't know what's going on behind that wall. You could have leaks, sparks, any disastrous situation. But it doesn't matter because your garage is pretty. No, no. I'm starting to sound a little cynical. <laughs>